just want you to know that we put out our presidential nominees, and mm -hmm. maybe you heard this, but I, I picked you as the president and Eric Mika as my vice president of BYU <laughs> Sports Nation. How do you feel about that? It's an honor. It's an honor <laughs> to, uh, to accept the nomination, and I'll, uh, I'll do the best I can. But this was pre-mustache, though. I don't think you knew about the mustache. So how does that change things? Oh, that adds that adds more legitimacy to the to the selection. Does it right? tell us about the mustache? I don't know. It's just just for a month. I don't think it looks good on me, but uh, I gotta have fun with it. Some of the guys are doing it, so I figured why not. The whole month. The whole month of November. Yeah. Who has the best mustache right now on the team? Probably size is getting pretty good. Uh, healthy. It's getting healthy. Nick has always had a little. A little one. It, 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 it needs some work. But uh, I'm hoping mine can, can catch up. We'll see how it goes. Okay, Southern Utah this week. The, the hope is it's an FCS team. You get a nice lead. We get you into the game. What's been the conversation like of getting you into this game? Yeah, pretty much that. You know, it, I mean, just like every other week, you know, there's always you have that same goal of being able to get up on a team and be able to put in your, you know, your second string guys just to get guys reps. So same mentality, you know, being able to be prepared going into the game and hopefully we can – you know, get off to a quick start, but we're not going to overlook them. You know, we got to be smart. You know, we're, they're a good team. They're a good opponent. So we're not going to overlook them at all. So we just got to go in, do our job, play our game, and then, uh, you know, just be ready to go from there. Obviously, you've had plenty of full speed reps. You've started against major programs, but this is a different offense. And there's something to getting those full game speed reps in a new offense. So what do you expect and what do you hope to see from yourself on Saturday? I just ex expect to, just to go out there and lead the offense and make good decisions, you know, not, not play beyond myself, you know, just go out there and, uh, and run the offense. And, and that's what Coach Detmer talks to us, you know, he tells us that all the time, is just to go out there, make the reads, run the offense, and don't, you don't need to, you know, go above and beyond. So I think that's kind of how I've been treating practice each week, you know, the whole season, you know, every day just go out and do the best I can. You know, I've got a, you know, ways to go to keep learning and keep improving. So, you know, if it if it comes on Saturday, some playing time, that'd be great. You know, to be be able to get some some full speed game reps. You know, that'd be fun. And you know, it obviously would be would be awesome to do that. But uh, not going to do anything. You know, more than that, more than than what I'm asked. I know you're always ready, but are you hoping the offense like puts up 28 in the first quarter so you can get in in the first half as opposed to maybe the second half? No, absolutely. You know, I, of course. You know, that's how it is every game. Every game, I'm hoping <laughs> we we get up by a lot and and uh. But uh, you know, I think we're doing we're having a good week of practice. You know, I mentioned before, you know, not overlooking these guys. We're we're preparing. We're coming out, staying sharp, staying mentally, uh, you know, focused. And uh, but no, that'd be awesome. You know, if we can go out and and, and play well and execute like the, like the way we we're capable of, I think we can see some good things. Not everyone gets to watch BYU football practice. In fact, it's very limited viewing to coaches and some administrators and obviously players. But you see it every day. Where do you feel like you have gotten better? from the start of fall camp to this point in the season? Uh, I think, you know, I still got a long ways to go with this, but just being able to read, read coverages and then be able, being able to you know, distribute the ball accordingly. You know, we've got a, you know, it's a pretty complicated offense, pro-style offense, and, and our defense, you know, has some, you know, it's, it's a pretty good defense. So being able to go against them and, and being able to, you know, face that type of talent every day and, and then, you know, read the coverage and, and just being able to, to stay solid mentally. I think that's the, the biggest thing is this, you know, it requires a lot of mental preparation, watching film and being able to know pre-snap what I'm doing, you know, pre-snap where, where am I looking to go here, and then obviously being able to, to adjust as the play goes on. So it's, just, it's, just, it's a lot going on mentally, so it's being able to slow it down and being able to, to focus on my reads and do that, I think I've, I've gotten better at, but I still obviously have, you know, still have, there's always room to improve, you know, you're never at the top of your game. So at the, you know, midway point of the season, Michigan State, everyone's thinking, okay, maybe there's a chance to uh, Tanner Mangum redshirts. Was there never a chance you would redshirt? Because you did come into the game, you kneeled the ball down, and then you tweeted after, I was yeah. never going to redshirt. Yeah, I, I think, obviously, you know, it's, um, you know, and, and people mean well. And, and it's, it's a compliment, you know, it's, it's, you know, people saying that, you know, they'd, they'd like to have me here for a few more years. But, you know, I just, I'm already 23, you know, I'm already a little bit older, and, uh, you know, I've already played a year, so there's no real need you know for me to redshirt and uh so so you know for me then that was never the plan going in and then obviously as the season goes on you just have to you know roll with it game by game and, and you can't predict what's going to happen or how each game is going to go so each game i'm, I'm you know I'm, if, if i'm called upon then i'll be ready to go in and, and do my best but as far as uh as redshirting you know that's not really the plan so i'll just make the make the most of the reps i do get 
and uh, you know prepare myself for for each week and then on on the next season as well. This is obviously an exercise in patience for you because, in a weird way, your years maybe got flip flopped. You were thrown in, thrust into the spotlight last year and and excelled, and then uh, you've kind of had to be patient this year. Not kind of, you've had to be patient this year. When you know that, look, I know I'm good enough to play and I can go do this. So how how have you been able to handle that mentally and be patient this year? Well, I think you just have to do the best you can to think, you know, big picture and think beyond yourself. And it doesn't mean it's easy. You know, it, you obviously, I, I'm a competitor. I love to play. I want to compete and help the team win. So obviously, you know, no one enjoys just have you know just watching. You know, you want to be able to go in and and, and do something. You know, to contribute. But uh, you know, I just have to always remind myself that you know it's not about me; it's about the team. And uh, you know, more than happy, I love to support these guys. I love this team. I love the guys on, on, on that, that I'm playing with every day. So, you know, I just I just think about that. You know, and, and think about the uh, the group as a whole, and then also just you know my preparation to use it to my advantage, to be able to get better in practice, be able to learn from Coach Detmer, learn from Taysen, learn from learn from the guys around me, and not let it uh, get me down, and not let it change the way I play or prepare and you know I, it's got to stay me you know stay stay positive obviously it's um you know it's uh a, a, like you said a different situation uh you know compared to last year but then you just got to adjust and be able to to i kind of just take things day by day you know just focus on what i can control and, and focus on um you know the, the the task at hand and i'm doing the best i can to do that and and it's been been a, been a good season i've learned a lot for sure Give us an idea of what it's like to be in the quarterback room there with all the guys, with, with Taysom, yourself, and, and Ty Detmer is leading the charge. What is that like? <laughs> it's pretty cool. It, it, there's a, we have a good camaraderie in, in that group. You know, we all get along really well. We're all close friends, Bo, Coy, Taysom, myself, and Coach Detmer. It, it's, it's a fun group. We get along really well. And then it's just being able to, to soak up all the knowledge we can. You know, from Coach Detmer, he, he's been – He's been, in, you know, he's played in the NFL for 14 years. He's he's coached a lot. He he knows the game. So just being able to soak all that in from him is is pretty cool. And sometimes I feel like I'm really behind and I've got a long ways to go. Like I thought I knew a lot about football, but I feel like now I don't. <laughs> it's like t taking me back to to elementary school. You know, just being able to learn learn the basics of the game. But it's cool. You know, it was a special opportunity and definitely doing my best to make the most of it. Can you understand him? Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and you know. But it took a few months. Take a little bit, you know, just, just to get the, the Texas slang down. But uh, no, it, it, he's fun. He's at first. I, I've talked about this before. When, when, when we in the spring, when we first started working with him, I I wasn't used to his sense of humor. You know, I, he's he's very sarcastic and can give you a hard time, and I wasn't used to that. And uh, but now I feel like I'm getting getting the hang of it, and we can kind of dish it back and forth. So it's pretty it's pretty fun. Little different than Robert and I. <laughs> what are your conversations like with Taysom Hill during the games on the sideline while? the team is in the midst of a battle you know I I, I don't say too much uh, just you know he he uh, you know he and the offense they're they're, they're kind of let the coaches coach you know obviously if I see some things I, I can you know we, we can talk a little bit about it uh, and talk about some plays you know you know ask him you know, what, he, what he saw there what he did there and and um, but I, I try not to interfere too much just because in, in the heat of, the, of a battle you kind of just want to stay focused stay in the zone but uh, you know he he and the offense are, are, and the coaches, the coaching staff in particular, they, they do a good job of making sure we come off the field and we, we know what we're seeing, we know what we're, we're getting, and then just being able to, to adjust. And um, so it's, it's uh, you know, each week we obviously try to improve, try to get better, so we're just trying to, trying to build and, and finish strong these last few games at home. Do you ever say, man, you look pretty tired. Like, do you want to sit out a series? Like, you cool? <laughs> he never gets tired. <laughs> that, seriously, he, he's one of the toughest guys I know. You know, he, you know, he's playing through pain, playing through little little dings here and there. But you know, he he's uh, you know he, he he plays through a lot. So, but I'll, you know, ready to go as as always. You know, and but uh, he's tough. Sometimes I think that he takes some hits, and I'm like, oh man, like is he gonna get up? But he gets right back up, pops up, and then runs and trucks a dude. And you know, he's uh. He's a fierce competitor, so it's pretty fun to watch sometimes. You realize that if you warm up on the sideline, that people think you're going to maybe come in? Because that happened at the end of the first yeah, half. Well, people watch. I, th I do it every game. Like, I'm always throwing. <laughs> like, and if you watch, like, NFL games, the quarterbacks are always throwing on the sideline. Yeah, yeah. Regardless, you know, it's just you got to stay warm, you know. you got to <laughs> keep the arm loose. And what just, you do. Because you're standing the whole game. you got the headset right. on. You kind of get a little stiff. So it's, yeah. just, it's just good to throw the ball around. Does it mean I'm going in? I'm just <laughs> – so everyone calm down. I'm just <laughs> – 
Twitter, <laughs> Twitter is blowing up, man. You know, and just playing catch, you know, all the all the media guys like to stir up some controversy <laughs> and Mangum, Mangum's going in, but it's like, no, I'm just throwing the ball. Throw left-handed next time. <laughs> be like, Tanner Mangum can't even use his right arm. You <laughs> know, just start throwing underhand now. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, before you go, I don't know if you're aware of the 1980s hit show Magnum P.I. Man, okay. Very good. You you are Mangum P.I. right I, I'm now. I'm getting there <laughs> with, with the stash. <laughs> I, I might be able to get there. He is Mangum P.I. I have a, I have a picture of that. I, someone last year did a Photoshop of my face on Magnum P.I., so yeah. maybe I'll have to whip that out and do, a, compa- yeah, do, yeah, do a comparison. Yeah. I'll have to you compare. got the stash. It's come exactly. full circle, man. Yeah, we'll see. Keep I'm it trying up. to get to my dad's level. He, my, my, mom, my mom married my dad with a mustache. She was thick. Oh. So I'm, <laughs> That's what convinced her? I guess so. Oh. She liked it back then. <laughs> she doesn't like it now. But <laughs> times change. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma to go and play well on Saturday, okay. man. Thank you.